when you're not disciplined enough. That's why you click on this video. I know. Because most people does. Like you. So listen to this. It may help, my friend. 1. Self-discipline starts with finding your purpose. Imagine your life as a journey and self-discipline as the compass guiding you through it. At the heart of self-discipline lies the concept of purpose. How that gets you out of bed every morning, excited to face the day's challenges. Think about it this way. If you don't know where you're going or why you're going there, you're like a ship without a destination. It's purpose that breathes life into your goals. Whether it's pursuing a career, staying fit, or even reading more books, understanding why you're doing it is your driving force. Your purpose gives you that internal spark. A motivation that's deeply rooted. When your actions align with your purpose, even the most mundane tasks can become meaningful steps toward a larger, more significant goal. For instance, if you aim to become a writer, your purpose could be to inspire, entertain, or educate others through your words. This sense of purpose will make every keystroke, every late night writing session, and every rejection letter a part of your journey towards your goal. To build self-discipline, you must first know why you're doing what you're doing. Discover your purpose and use it as a beacon, guiding your disciplined actions. 2. Count on yourself. Life is a series of steps, both big and small, that eventually lead you to your goals. To master self-discipline, it's crucial not only to commit to your larger goals, but also to the small daily actions that pave the way. Lives in your goals as a puzzle, and every daily task or action you take as a puzzle piece. Each piece is essential, and you're the one putting the puzzle together. This means that your discipline isn't just about having grand ambitions. It's about committing to every step in the process. For example, if you're striving to get in shape, it's not just about setting the goal to run a marathon. It's about committing to daily workouts, eating healthy, and resting properly. It's about every single step that builds your fitness, one day at a time, to be truly self-disciplined. You must become your biggest supporter. No one else can complete the puzzle for you. You need to commit to those small tasks even when motivation wanes, even when the path gets tough. Here's the key. Small, consistent actions are the building blocks of success. It's in those everyday moments that you develop resilience, focus, and ultimately, self-discipline. Every time you tackle a task, you're taking another step closer to your goals consider subscribing to our channel. 3. Show up every day. Imagine life as a journey and each day as a step along the path. When you're striving for self-discipline, consistency becomes your trusted companion on this journey. Think of it like building a muscle. Just as you wouldn't go to the gym once and expect to become strong, you can't work toward your goals with sporadic effort. It's the daily grind that shapes you. Showing up every day means committing to your objectives regularly, even when it's hard. It's about putting in the work, whether you're feeling motivated or not. Why? Because it's in those moments of unwavering commitment that you build the focus and resilience required to overcome challenges. For example, if you're learning to play a musical instrument, practice every day, even when your fingers are sore and you don't feel like it. The discipline of daily practice is what will transform you from a beginner into a skilled musician. Life is filled with distractions, hurdles, and setbacks. By showing up consistently, you create a routine and an unwavering dedication to your goals. It's this kind of persistence that turns dreams into realities. In essence, self-discipline is the habit of consistency. Is the commitment to working on your goals daily, regardless of your mood or external circumstances. Just like a river shapes the hardest rock with its consistent flow, your daily efforts will shape you into a disciplined, determined individual. 4. Practice voluntary hardship. Life often throws unexpected challenges our way, and to navigate these hurdles effectively, it's essential to prepare ourselves mentally and emotionally. This is where the concept of practicing voluntary hardship comes into play. Think of it as your personal training ground. Just as athletes push their limits in training to excel in their sport, you can deliberately introduce discomfort into your life to fortify your resilience. Why would you willingly 
make your life more challenging. It may seem counterintuitive, but it's a bit like strengthening your immune system by exposing yourself to controlled stressors. By taking cold showers, for example, you're choosing to endure discomfort. This experience teaches you to handle adverse situations with a sense of control and calm, even when they're unexpected. Remember, life is unpredictable. By voluntarily embracing discomfort, you become more adaptable, ready to face the difficulties that life throws at you. You develop a mindset that says, I've been through tough situations by choice. I can handle whatever comes my way. The lesson here is that by willingly testing yourself with voluntary hardship, you build the inner strength and mental toughness necessary to face the unpredictabilities of life. When real challenges arise, you'll find yourself better equipped to tackle them, and you'll do so with a greater sense of confidence. Five, practice dichotomy of control. Life can often feel like a whirlwind of chaos where we encounter situations beyond our influence. The dichotomy of control is a powerful concept that can help you navigate these turbulent waters and maintain your tranquility and mental discipline. Imagine life as a series of events, some within your control and some entirely beyond it. It's like a split path. On one side, you have things you can directly influence, such as your choices, actions, and reactions. On the other side, there are events influenced by external forces, things you cannot change, like the weather, other people's actions, or the past. Now, here's the life lesson. Focus your energy and emotions on what you can control and learn to accept what's beyond your control. This might sound simple, but it's a profound and liberating practice. By concentrating your efforts on the controllable aspects of life, you empower yourself. You stop fretting about circumstances. You can't alter and channel your energy into productive actions. In essence, it's about letting go of the unnecessary burden of trying to change what's unchangeable. It's not easy, but it's incredibly liberating. For example, if you're stuck in a traffic jam, you can't magically clear the road. Instead, you can control how you react. Perhaps by using the time to listen to an audiobook or practice deep breathing to reduce stress. By embracing the dichotomy of control, you'll find a sense of inner peace. You'll no longer be tormented by external factors and will instead find strength in your ability to manage your responses. This practice doesn't mean you become passive. It means you act with wisdom putting your efforts where they'll make a difference and letting go of the rest. Six, never play the victim. Life can be challenging and it's perfectly normal to face setbacks and obstacles. But one of the most critical life lessons you can learn is to avoid playing the victim. What does this mean? It's about taking responsibility for your actions and circumstances, even when things don't go as planned. When you adopt a victim mentality, you tend to blame external factors, other people or circumstances for the challenges you face. This outlook not only disempowers you but also undermines your self-discipline. Instead of finding solutions and taking action, you remain stuck in a state of helplessness. So here's the essential life lesson. Understand that while you can't always control what happens to you, you can control how you respond to it. By shifting from a victim mindset to one of ownership and responsibility, you regain control over your life. Let's take an example. You've encountered a setback in your career, and it's easy to blame the job market or your boss for your current situation. But playing the victim in this scenario means you're relinquishing control over your future by acknowledging your role in your career. Whether it's seeking new opportunities or enhancing your skills, you regain control. This mindset shift fosters resilience and discipline. In essence, it's about reframing challenges as opportunities for growth and learning. It's recognizing that adversity doesn't define you. Your response to it does. So rather than dwelling on what's gone wrong, focus on what you can do to improve your situation. Self-discipline thrives in an environment of ownership and proactive problem solving. 7. Honestly review your day. Life can be a whirlwind of activity and it's easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle. But one of the most valuable practices for self-discipline is taking a moment each day to honestly review your actions and their alignment with your goals. Here's how this life lesson works. At the end of your day, set aside some time for reflection. 
ask yourself questions like, what did I do well today? And where were my discipline and self-control tested? By doing this, you gain insights into your behavior and decision-making. Now, the purpose of this isn't to beat yourself up over any mistakes or shortcomings. It's about self-awareness, self-examination, and self-determination, as the Stoics would say. When you engage in this introspective exercise regularly, you develop a heightened sense of self-awareness. You begin to notice patterns in your actions, both positive and negative. For instance, you might recognize that you tend to procrastinate on important tasks in the afternoon, or that you often get distracted during meetings. Acknowledging these tendencies is the first step toward change. The real power in this life lesson lies in your ability to make constructive changes. Once you've pinpointed areas where discipline was tested, you can formulate a plan for improvement. This might involve setting better time management practices or adopting strategies to enhance focus and concentration. But remember, it's not just about self-critique. In fact, the research shows that forgiving yourself, not beating yourself up, prevents you from continuing to procrastinate. Be compassionate with yourself and acknowledge that you're a work in progress. So start your reflection practice and watch how your self-discipline and success flourish. These principles of self-discipline rooted in stoicism emphasize the importance of self-awareness commitment. Consider subscribing to our channel